Now we're taking on the issue of don't ask, don't tell in the military. Joining us are Steve Lonigan with Americans for Prosperity and legal analyst Gwendolyn Jackson. Okay, Gwen, let's start with you. Should the military end this policy? Well, you know what? I was thinking about it because uh, I have a military background, and I think the Republicans got it wrong this time. I, I think it's it's a disgrace that they tried that they blocked this policy. I think it's an antiquated law, it's an antiquated rule, and what the military should be concerned with and is concerned with is do we have a lethal fighting force? Agree, Steve, or not? You know, Gwen, it's interesting that you say that about the Republicans getting it wrong because this is Bill Clinton's policy that was adopted almost, what, 14 or 15 years ago, and really prior to that was sort of like the standing criteria for the military anyway. Uh, the United States military is not a petri dish for social engineering experiments or advancing popular causes. It is first and foremost a fighting machine, like you said, uh, ultimately, like you said as well. And what's important to a military machine is sheer discipline. What are we saying to those soldiers that are. Are you saying gays fight? can't be disciplined, Steve? No, what I'm saying is the United States military also he already has standing rules that prohib prohibit emotion, prohibit perhaps em embracing or dating between uh, enlisted men and officers. Oh, In let's fact, just be honest. I mean, the dating thing has been going on since the beginning, hasn't it? And don't we have policies don't in ask, place. don't tell. This but is not Steve, flagrant. I'm just going to have to say this. They have policies in place to make sure that there's not inappropriate dating relationships. What are we talking about here? We're talking about fundamental issues. The issue is, do we have a lethal fighting force? And if you've queried some of the commanders, they're concerned about what the perception is on that battlefield, okay? And I don't know if you uh, are aware of it, but gays have been in the military for centuries. They're not only in our military, but they've been in, they're in other countries' militaries that we're fighting. Even the military has come up with their own ideas about it. High-ranking military, some have said it's going to hurt the war effort. Others have said it's going to not hurt the war effort. Steve, what do you say to that? I say if it's not broke, don't fix it. The military, there's only one reason to change this policy, and that's to advance a social agenda, and that's not what the military is for. The military is a fighting force. The Discipline. military, Steve, is a microcosm of the United States of America. For many the years, the United States of America is not a fighting years, force. For Gwen. many That's not true. I said it's a microcosm. People that join the military are a part of our society. They are not afraid well, of serving with people that are when, in that okay, are homosexual. For both They're of not you. afraid of serving I, I with people to of say different race, religion, culture, and creed. When you join the military, you give up much of that autonomy, much of your ability to do, live your own life. You come under the rules and regulations and to the command of your commanding officers. Absolutely, period. and the commanding officer sir. Uh, basically is going to adopt the policies that are put in place. Politicians put those policies in place. What about the timing of this? President Obama actually campaigned on, I'm going to make this policy change. It didn't come up before the midterm elections. <laughs> now correct. we're going to have to wait on a decision until after the midterm elections. Isn't it just political? Great Steve observation, first. Brenda, because at a time when the president's under attack because his left-wing supporters are saying, you're not far left enough, he comes up with this issue, and it's part of galvanizing that base. There are a lot of people that, uh, you know, are against the policy, and I think the Republicans missed a wonderful opportunity to pick up more votes oh, in this midterm election. Oh, I don't agree with that at all. I, I think that Republicans... And that's unfortunate that you don't agree with you know, it. It's, it's really good. It's kind of... It is kind of interesting, and I was talking to Brenda before about, you know, 15 years ago, conservatives were opposing don't ask, don't tell. Now we watch conservatives and Republicans saying, no, we like Bill Clinton's policy, so we've certainly... Uh, shifted positions here. That's all we have time for. Steve Lonigan and Gwendolyn Jackson, thank you both for taking on the issue and joining us.